Modern Kannada literature refers to the body of literature written in the Kannada language, a language spoken mainly in the Indian state of Karnataka. The Kannada script is the writing system used in Kannada literature. In the last 40 years, eight modern Kannada authors have been awarded the Jnanpith Award, a prestigious private literary award in India. In addition, the Sahitya Akademi Award, the second highest award for literature granted by the Government of India, has been conferred upon Kannada writers 50 times. Dawn of modern literature Topic: 1800–1900 The nascent beginnings of modern Kannada literature can be traced to the early 19th century under the stewardship of Maharaja Krishnaraja Wodyar III, the ruler of the princely state of Mysore, and court poets who attempted to steer away from the ancient Shampu form of prose and popularize prose renderings of Sanskrit epics and plays. Kempu Narayana's Mudramanjusha seal casket. 1823 can be considered the first modern novel, anterior to English influence on Kannada. Though inspired by Vishakadatta's Sanskrit original Mudrarakshasa, the work displays a creativity of its own. The impetus to modern literature came from a Western style education and the Christian missionaries who relied on the local language to propagate the gospel. The arrival of the printing press was a catalyst to this process. Among the several early Kannada publications, the first Kannada English Dictionary by Ferdinand Kittel 1894 is noteworthy. B. L. Rice edited and published ancient Kannada classics and compiled a brief history of Kannada literature, while J. H. Fleet compiled a collection of folk ballads including the well-known Sangoli Rayana Dang, The Revolt of Sangoli Raya. The most outstanding lyrical poet of this period, whose poems were reminiscent of the medieval mystic Kannada poetry, was Sisanala Sharif. In the latter half of the 19th century, progress towards original works in prose narratives initially gained momentum through translations from Sanskrit, English, Yatrakana Sanchara from The Pilgrim's Progress, 1847, Marathi, Yamuna and Bengali languages. Early dramatic literatures were translations from Sanskrit Shakuntala, 1869, and English Macbeth, King Lear and Romeo and Juliet. With the standardization of modern prose, the earliest original social fictions were Suryakantha by Lakshman Gadagkar 1892, and Indira Bai by Gulvadi Venkata Rao 1899. With the theme being reform, the latter work critically examines social issues, reflecting an awakening. Original plays carrying the same theme include, among others, the Igapa Hegedeya Vivaha Prahasana by Suri Venkatamana Sastri Nanadalike Lakshminarayana Madana wrote two important prose pieces, Adbuta Ramayana and Ramaswamedam what makes the latter writing historically important is that the epic Ramayana is looked at from a modern sensibility with the author as the narrator and his wife as the listener, the narration being interrupted at various stages with humorous exchanges between the couple, resulting from questions raised by the listener. The transition from the age of verse to prose may be summed up with Madonna's proclamation, Poetry deserves killing whereas prose reaches the heart. Padium vadium, gadium ridium. The Renaissance Topic: 1900–1925 With the turn of the 20th century, B. M. Srikantaya B. M. Shri, regarded by some as the father of modern Kannada literature gave the call for writing originals in modern Kannada, emancipating the language from ancient courtly classics and stressing the need for the influence of English literature. This period can be considered a seed time, for a golden age to come. His adaptation of lyrics from English were effective, the best known among his works being the English Jithagalu, English Songs, a seminal work that set the trend for Navadaya, New Birth, Kannada poetry to come. Other notable poets who were able to evolve new metrics out of old ones were Masti Venkatesh Iyengar in his poem of love and tragedy, the Madalingana Kanive, Madalinga's Valley, 
1924, and Govinda Pai in the Kavitavatara 1916, though Panj Manjesh Rao 1900 is considered a pioneer in the field of short stories, it is Masti Venkatesh Iyengar who is credited for laying the foundation for a generation of short story tellers with his Kalavu Sana Kathagalu, A Few Short Stories, 1920, and Sana Kathagalu, Short Stories. 1924, the consolidation of modern drama was pioneered by T. P. Kailasam, a towering personality in the field, with his Talu Gatti, The Hollow and the Solid, 1918. In contrast to the earlier Indira Bai, this work examines the modern education system from a Gandhian viewpoint. Kailasam followed this with Talai Katok Kuline, Wages for Tying the Mongol Sutra, a story that criticizes the dowry system in marriage. Kailasam's plays were mainly concerned with problems affecting middle class Brahmin families, the dowry system, religious persecution, woes in the extended family system, and exploitation of women. He represented for the first time in Kannada theatre, a spokesperson for liberal values, and is thus considered by some as the one who laid the foundation of amateur Kannada theatre, summarizing the earlier historicals written in English by B. L. Rice, J. H. Fleet, Robert Sewell, and Bandarkar. Alor Ventaka Rao wrote the novel Karnataka Gadavebhava. The work was intended to rekindle pride among Kannadigas about their glorious past and bring awareness about the great rulers, poets and saints who had originated from Karnataka, its traditions and its heritage in arts and architecture. Topic 1925 to 1950. Topic Navadaya The Navadaya period saw the rise of acclaimed lyricists who combined mystic poetry of the Vachanas and Kirthanas of medieval times and the native folk songs of oral traditions with influences from modern English romantics. Best known among them are D. R. Bendra, Gopalakrishna Adiga, K. V. Puttapa, Kuvampu, Shivarama Karanth, V. K. Gokak, Masti Venkatesh Iyengar, D. V. Gundapa, D. V. G., P. T. Narasimachar, M. V. Sitharamaya, G. P. Rajaratnam, K. S. Narasimhaswamy, and Adya Rangacharya Sri Ranga, and Gora Ramaswamy Iyengar. Bendra is perhaps the most outstanding of modern Kannada lyricists, authoring a collection of 27 poems, including such masterpieces as Gari. Wing, 1932, Natalila, 1938, and Sakagitha, 1940. His poems had a transcendental quality about them, which were neither narrative or dramatic. They cover a wide range of themes, including patriotism, love of nature, conjugal love, transcendental experiences, and sympathy for the poor. The Sakagitha is an autobiographical poem about his married life and personal experiences. Bendra had sworn that in his poetry he would. Rather sow stars in Kannada soil than brilliant jewels. The beauty and grandeur of the Malnad Hills strongly influenced Kuvampu, one of Kannada's Doyan poets, in his Kalki 1933, in which the poet describes the life of the agrarian community. He further showed his brilliance in using the blank verse in his masterpiece and magnum opus that took him nine years to write, the Sri Ramayana Darshanam 1949, which contains 22,284 lines, divided into 50 cantos. This work marks the beginning of modern Kannada epic poetry. While the poem follows the Valmiki tradition, Kuvampu puts a stamp of originality on it, bringing together the Indian and Western epic traditions. In a departure from the original epic, Lanka Salon does not burn in the war nor does Sita enter the fire alone called Agni Pravisha, but rather is followed by Rama. Both however reappear from the fire unscathed giving the mortals a glimpse of their divinity. Not only is Sita's chastity proven, so is Rama's fidelity towards her. Like medieval poet Nagachandra, Kuvampu portrays Ravana as an evolving soul. He pays homage to all the great poets of the world, including the sage Valmiki, thus placing himself in the tradition of world epic poetry. The work abounds in metaphors and similes and brings home the thought that all living beings will eventually evolve into perfect beings. In the words of a historian, no one could have imagined that the Kannada language is capable of this complex musical quality, for the first time in this century was Kannada made a language worthy of the gods. Govinda Pai succeeded in depicting an authentic Christian ambience in the Golgotha 1931. 
Considered a unique Christian work in Indian literature, Pai narrates in detail, starting from the Christ being taken to Pontius Pilate by a hostile group of Jews demanding his death and the events leading to his crucifixion at Golgotha. The success of this work encouraged Pai to follow with three panegyrics in 1947, Vishaki, Prabhasa and Dahali, narrating the last days of the Buddha, God Krishna and Gandhi respectively. Gilavindu is his first collection of poems. Forty-six in all, they bring out his love for nature, his country and Kannada language while the Nandadipa, a collection of 37 poems are about devotion to God. The influence of the West inspired a new genre in writing, the essay. Here, A. N. Murthy Rao's Hagaluganasagalu, Day Dreams, 1937, is best known. M. V. Sitharamaya came to limelight during the peak of the Navadaya period and was inspired by such well-known writers as B. M. Srikantaya and Masti Venkatesh Iyengar. A man of many talents, he was a renowned poet Haki Hadu or Bird Song, novelist, Robinson Crusoe, short story writer, Margadarshaka, painter, musician, literary critic, researcher, dramatist, Swayamvara or Choice of a Husband, essayist, Hidi Huvu or Handful of Flowers, and biographer, Kavi Rana or Poet Rana. To his credit are twelve collections of poems, ten collections of short stories, nine novels, four collections of essays, and nine plays. All of Sitharamaya's contributions carry a liberal message of love for his surroundings, nature and mankind. An authority on Kannada grammar and literary history, it is to his credit for researching and establishing that the true author of the 9th century Kannada classic Kavirajamarga may have been poet Sri Vijaya in the court of King Amogavarsha I. He established a research foundation in the name of his mentor, B. M. Srikantaya. B. M. Srikantaya Prathishtana. Perhaps the closest in comparison to the wisdom poems of the late medieval poet Sarvina is the Mankuthimana Kaga. Dull Thimas Rigamarol. 1943 by D. V. Gundapa. A successful journalist, he was known for his command over the Kannada language and its classics, with a knowledge of Sanskrit as well, despite his limited education which was limited to matriculation only. These qualities and experiences were to serve him well as a writer. Attributed to him are 60 writings in just about every genre of modern Kannada with the exception of the novel. His adaptation of Shakespeare's Macbeth into Kannada is well acclaimed. The celebrated writer of conjugal love poems, who is known to have been inspired by Robert Burns, K. S. Narasimhaswamy, won critical acclaim for Mysore Malage, Mysore Jasmine, 1942, a description of the bliss of everyday marital life. In later years, his poems were more metaphysical and included contemporary events in Dominion Janana and the Samsara Rajyanga. Eminent poets produced inspiring poetic dramas, B. M. Srikantiya being the trailblazer with his Gadayuda Natakam, The War of Clubs, 1925, a modern version of Rana's 982 classic and Aswath Thaman, a native version of the Greek play Ajax by Sophocles. This was the beginning of tragic drama in Kannada, and a new way portraying ancient local heroes. Govinda Pai's Hebaralu, Thumb, 1946, dramatizes the story of Drona and Ekalavya, characters from the epic Mahabharata. Kailasam and his worthy contemporary, A. N. Swami Venkatadri Iyer, Samsa, continued to produce fine dramas. Samsa is credited with writing 23 plays, of which only six have survived. Of these, a trilogy on the Mysore king Ranadira Kantirava are well known, Vagata Vikramarya, the Wicked Vikramarya, 1928, Vijayanarasimha, 1936, and Mantrashakti in 1938. Sri Ranga was a dominating and complete authority as a playwright, though he has penned poems and novels as well. In a period of 40 years, he authored more than 40 full-length plays and more than 100 one-act plays. His plays, filled with wit and satire, are divided over two periods, the first between 1930 and 1952 where they mostly concerned with social issues. He wrote on Gandhian values and the decadence caused by the caste system in his Harijanwara, the Harijan Week, 1934, the Sandhyakala, 1939, and the Sokachakra, 1952, the wit and satire in Kailasam's language, Kannada laced with English, and the social reformer in him are best exemplified in his plays Bahishkara, 1929, which focuses on religious practices, and Sul, prostitute, 1945, which dwells on social problems. The 1930s saw the rise of another major figure in Kannada literature, Shivarama Karanth, who debuted in play Garbagudi. Sanctum, 1932, which decries the exploitation of society in the name of religion. 
A series of successful novels were written by him in this period, best known among which are Chomana Duty, Choma's Toil, 1933, which describes the plight of a harajan in Indian society and Marali Manage, Back to the Soil. 1942, a story about rural life on the West Coast centered on a family's evolution over three generations, during a time of change brought about by westernization. Kuvampu's well-accepted Kanor Subama Hegadithi, Subama Hegadithi of Kanor, 1936, is about an educated protagonist in a conservative society, v. K. Gokak, who was educated in Oxford, established himself as an important contributor to poetics, criticism, drama and the novel in Kannada, with no less than 55 books to his credit. In addition, he was a distinguished critic of Indo-English literature. His other interests included culture, religion, philosophy and education. His first novel, Ijodu, Misalliance, 1935, dwells on marital problems caused by sexual incompatibility. His short stay in England helped confirm his love for his native country and language, resulting in the generation of Samudragi Tegalu, Sea Songs, 1940, and Samudradashainda, From Beyond the Seas, 1940, the latter being a travelogue on his experiences there. His real epic, Bharata Sindhu Rashmi, runs into 35,000 lines with the introduction in English. Masti Venkatesh Iyengar continued to dominate in short stories with such classics as Kakana Kot, Kaka's Fort. 1938, a novel that remained obscure for some time. Set in a tribal atmosphere, the story brings out the life of a tiny hamlet which eventually merges with a feudal chiefdom. Masti's description of their life, love and society is authentic and natural. Whether P. T. Narasimachar wrote an essay, a play or a poem, the poet in him was always evident. He has three collection of essays to his credit, Rathasaprami Eshalumarada Kellage and Denakapurana .Other notable writers of this period were Gaurar Ramaswamy Iyengar and Ajampur Sitaram Gaurar gave up studies to join the freedom struggle at the age of 17 and came under the enduring influence of Mahatma Gandhi whom he knew personally. He was active in the promotion of the cottage industry at the village level in the erstwhile Mysore state. A marvellous storyteller, his first book Halaya Chitragalu, Village Vignettes, 1930, won him many laurels for his keen observation and narration of the beauty of rustic life. He followed this with several stories, describing on one hand the casteism and superstitions of rural communities and on the other the simplicity and charm in these communities. In addition to stories, he has to his credit essays, skits, travelogues and novels. In fact among the first novels ever to be written on the independence struggle was penned by him and is titled Maravanage, Procession, 1948. Ananda's outstanding book, Nanu Kanda Hudugi, The Girl I Killed, is a tragedy centered on a girl who commits suicide after social disgrace. Gopalakrishna Adiga describes the joy of political independence in Kadavu Navu, We Shall Built. 1948, a longing for spiritual values in Mohana Morali and the importance of individual freedom in Samaja Bhairava. Topic: 1950 to 1975. Topic: Late Navadaya. This period saw the emergence of new trends such as the Navya modernist and Pragatashila progressive though the legends of the previous era continued to produce notable works in the older Navadaya style. In poetry, D. R. Bendra's Naku Tanti four strings", 1964, and Kuvampu's Anikatana are well known. Gokak brought out the innate insufficiencies in the more advanced Western cultures in Indila Nail 1965. The Navadaya-style novels continued to be successful with such noteworthy works as Shivarama Karanth's Mukaji Akanasugalu Mukaji's Visions, 1968, where the author explores the origins of Mont's faith in the mother goddess and the stages of evolution of civilization. Kuvampu's Maligalali Matamagalu, The Bride of the Hills. 1967 is about loving relationships that exist in every strata of society. 
Being a playwright, Sri Ranga gave a dramatic touch to his Purushartha where the entire action is on 15 August 1947, and the protagonist and his three friends reminisce about the past. Masti Ventakish Iyengar's two classic novels of this era were the Chandabasavanayaka which describes the overthrow of Bidiner's chief Chandabasavanayaka on Karnataka's coast by Haider Ali in the late 18th century, and Chikavarajendra which describes the fall of the tiny kingdom of Korg ruled by King Chika Vararajendra into the hands of the British East India Company. Masti describes the social, economic, political and cultural situation at that time and the methods used by the British to gain territorial control. The common theme in both works is the despotism and tyranny of the incumbent native rulers resulting in the intervention of a foreign power, which appears on the scene to restore order, but has its own imperialistic intentions. Masti's other important stories are Navaratri, Nine Nights, and his epic Sri Rama Patabasheka, Rama's Coronation, 1972. The latter story begins with the end of the Ramayana War and the return of Rama, Sita, and Lakshmana to Ayodhya. Rama, who is crowned as king of Ayodhya is elevated to the level of a perfect man, who has overcome extreme difficulties, his personage being described through the viewpoint of several people who have been in close association with him. A charismatic young writer, S. L. Barappa made his presence felt from the 1960s with his first novel Dharmasri, though it was his Vamsavriksha, family tree, 1966, that put him in the spotlight as one of Kannada's most popular novelists. It is a story of a respected scholar, Srinivasa Sratri, his family and their long-held values. The protagonist's young and widowed daughter-in-law wishes to remarry, putting his family tradition at risk. His best was yet to come with the Grahabanga, Breaking of a Home, 1970, a story of a woman who tries in vain to survive under tragic circumstances. The characters in the story are rustic and often use vulgar language. Other important novels are Datu, Crossing. 1973, which portrays a Harijan who revolts against the caste system, and Parva, a major work in Kannada fiction and an admirable attempt at recreating life on the subcontinent during the time of the epic Mahabharata. Important women writers of the time were Tirumalamba, the first woman novelist, Anasua Shankar, popularly known as Triveni, who authored the famous novel Sharapanyara or Cage of Arrows, and M. K. Indira, who offered insight into women's problems. Topic. Pragatashila For a short while, a simplistic form of fiction literature called Pragatashila progressive, meant for the common man, gained popularity. The earliest writing in this style is ascribed to A. N. Krishna Rao and Ka Ru who portrayed an idealistic musician in Sandaraga The best known writers in this class are Basavaraj Katamani who celebrated the heroes of the Quit India movement in Madi Madidavaru. Those who did and died. The tenacity of a journalist in Jawalamukhiamele, on the volcano, 1951, and the rural atmosphere in Manu Matu Henu, soil and women. His Mahada Balayali, caught in passion, describes immorality in religious institutions. T. R. Suba Rao dropped out of school to join the freedom struggle, but later came under the influence of well-known journalist S. K. Sharma and the passionate Kannada writer A. N. Krishna Rao. After a short stint as a journalist, Subha Rao took to writing short stories though his talent and consequent popularity was due to his novels. Subha Rao's numerous stories are intense and full of idealism but always with a human face. His early novels, Purushavatara and Munjavininda Munjavu concerned the problems of the underprivileged, the downtrodden and the outcast, a native of Chitradurga. Many of Subha Rao's stories have this region as the backdrop, drawing on its rich history and the heroics of its Pelegar chiefs. His later novels show an inclination towards philosophy, in contrast to his earlier atheist beliefs. Best known among his novels are Masanada Huvu, Flower from a Cemetery, a story about the plight of prostitutes, and historicals such as Durgasthamana and Hamsa Jeet, Swan Song, a story about a dedicated musician of the late 18th century during annexation of Chitradurga by Tipu Sultan. Navya It was Gokak who gave the call that the Navya modernist poetic era had arrived, with his Navya Kavidigalu, modern poems, 1950. 
With the passing of the Gandhi era and the influences it had upon the minds of people, a new era in which to express modern sensibilities had arrived. Gopalakrishna Adiga is considered the father of this expression with his Nadeju Banda Dari, the path traversed, 1952, where he sought inspiration from T. S. Eliot and Auden. His other famous poems are Gondolapura, Pandemonium, 1954, Buddha, 1959, and others. Though he belonged to the earlier Navadaya generation in the Gokak mold, G. S. Shivarudrapa made his mark in the Navya period too. His Mumbai Jataka, A Horoscope of Bombay, 1966, takes a closer look at urbanized society in Mumbai. A protege of Kuvampu, Shivarudrapa gained fame at the peak of the popularity of romantic poems with his Samagma, Songs of Equanimity, 1951, poems which are known to have an idealistic bend. He continued to produce more poems in the same vein, such as Cheluvu Olavu, Beauty and Truth, 1953, and Devashilpa, Divine Sculpture, 1959, though in his later poems a gradual shift to social issues with a streak of admiration for God's creation is seen. As a critic, Shivarudrapa has authored several books, some about Kannada poets and others a comparison of Eastern and Western cultures, such as Vimarshaya Purva Pashima a critique on attitudes, Soundarya Samikshe on aesthetic values, and Mahakavya Swarupa on the practice of the epic form. His critical essay, Anuranana is about the Vachana poets of the 12th century, their tradition, style and influence on later poets. K. S. Narasimhaswamy continued to be prominent in this era writing such landmark poems as Salalate, The Sculptured Creeper, 1958, Tareda Bagilu, The Open Door, 1972, Malagia Mail, Jasmine Garland, 1986, Idadiru Nana Nina Mili, Place Me Not on Your Throne, and Gadiaradongadia Mund, Before the Clock Shop. Among the most well-known of later generation Navya poets are Chandrashikara Kambar, Chandrashikar Patil, P. Lankesh, and K. S. Nisar Ahmed. In the late 1950s, Sri Ranga produced several well-known dramas focusing more on the creator of society, man, in a dramatic style, than on social problems in his Katail Balaku, Darkness and Light, 1959, and Kelu Janamejaya, Listen Janamejaya, 1960. In his effort to take his original plays to audiences outside Karnataka, he was helped by theatrical troops such as the Karnataka Theatre of Bombay, Kannada amateurs of Darwad and even well-known director-producers such B. V. Karanth. Other outstanding playwrights from this period are Gurish Karnad, P. Lankesh, Chandrashikara Kambar and Chandrashikar Patil. Karnad's Tuglak 1964, portrays violence created by idealism gone astray. Considered an important creation in Kannada theatre, the play depicts the 14th century Sultan of Delhi, Muhammad Tughlaq in contrasting styles. On one hand the Sultan is a tyrannical and whimsical ruler, and on the other, an idealist who seeks the best for his subjects. Most plays written by Karnad have either history or mythology as their theme, with a focus on their relevance to modern society. Kambara's Jokumaraswamy is perhaps the most popular amateur play in the language. It presents the conflict between a ruthless power and the popular revolt, leading to the death of the protagonist, the soil tiller. Kambara is best known for his insight and his ability to bring the folk element into his plays. Lankesh's Sankranthi brings out the tumultuous events of the late 12th century, during the rise of the Lingayat faith and the struggle of Brahmanism in this period. The presentation includes disputations between the saint poet Basavanna and his patron King Biala II. The Navya novel was launched by Shantinath Desai with his Mukti, 1961, which narrates the protagonist's quest for an independent identity, liberation from his dependence on a friend, and his infatuation for the friend's sister. His second novel, Vikshepa, 1971, tells the story of a village youth from northern Karnataka who attempts to flee from his traditional environment by studying English in Bombay and later flee to England. An English translation was published recently. Veena Shantishwar brings feminine sensibilities to her novels, notable among them being Mulagalu, Thrones, 1968, and Konyadari, The Final Choice. 1972. However, the most acclaimed classic in this genre was the Samskara by U. R. Anantha Murthy. 1965. 
The novel narrates the search for a new identity and values by the protagonist, a Brahmin, who has sexual intercourse with the untouchable mistress of his heretical adversary. Another notable work is the Swarupa by Pornachandra Tiazwi. In the genre of short stories, writers who are best known are U. R. Anantha Murthy, Yashwant Chital, P. Lankesh, Ramachandra Sharma, Shantinath Desai, Rajalakshmi Rao and K. Sadashiva. Anantha Murthy's Prasni contains his best collection of short stories including Gatashrada, which describes from a boy's point of view the tragedy that befalls a young pregnant widow. His collection Moni includes the stories Navalagulu peacocks, and Clip Joint. In addition, using his strong background in English literature, Anantha Murthy has made useful contributions as a poet, a playwright and most influentially, as a critic in shaping the direction of modern Kannada criticism. <laughs> Naviatera From the early 1970s, a change is seen in the output of novels and stories, an anti-Navia reaction by writers, many of whom were themselves Navia writers. This genre, called Naviatera postmodernist, sought to fulfill a more socially responsible role. Most well known in this form of writing are Pornachandra Tihazwi and Devanor Mahadeva. Tihazwi moved away from his initial foray in poetry to writing novels, a move that won him accolades in the form of the most creative novel of the year for his Carvalho in 1980 and Chidambara Rahasya in 1985. His best-known short stories are Abachirina Post Office, The Post Office at Abacure, 1970, narrating the repercussions of setting up a post office at Abacure, Kubi Matu Ayala which is about a doctor who combats the superstitions of villagers and the Tabarana Keita, Tabara's story, which decries bureaucracy. Most of his literature is related to nature, conservation and the farmers. Mahadeva's Marikandavaru, those who sold themselves, and Mudala Simeli Kol Gail Ityadi, murder in the eastern region, effectively portray a realistic account of the life of Dalits. <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>